Hello, Beth from Pearl Treasure Designs here. Welcome to Minnie's Challenge, hosted by Crafted by Corey, spring and Easter themed. Today I am making an Easter theme, resurrection theme, with the creation of the tomb of Jesus. Uh, this is the burial tomb, and uh, I am making Minnie's to fit on the two-tiered uh, display that I have. And so... I am trying to figure out how these are going to fit together. This is uh, some uh, granite uh, pieces that I had basically laying around in my driveway that have been washed, dried, and scrubbed diligently. And then uh, I'm trying to place them together as, as nicely as I can so that they're level uh, to fit the tomb door on. As you can see me trying to mess with it there. And uh, then we'll see how the rest of the design that I had spinning around in my head goes. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is to figure out if the, uh, the glue gun was ready and thinking that it was ready. Uh, so don't laugh at me because I had a, a senior moment and uh, forgot to turn it on. Yeah, plugged it in but didn't turn it on. So this next segment, uh, I had to wait for the glue gun to heat up. So <laughs> welcome to my world. So here, uh, the glue gun is ready. Uh, and so I was trying to uh, make sure that I kept my placement because I, I really liked how uh, level it was. And uh, a little glue goes a long way. Uh, and this is kind of my practice run. If I really like it, then I'm gonna go back and put E6000 uh, on the granite pieces to hold it in place better. Um, for right now, I am tacking it to see if I like the placement. And uh, a little bit of uh, hot glue just to hold the, the tomb door in place. And uh, I am going to off-center this so it's not covering the entire opening. Uh, symbolically, it, it means a lot to me, um, as is Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. Uh, and so that is part of the process for project number one. And uh, the next part, I am going to add some shrubbery uh, that I made out of the dyed and dried peat that I got in the miniature section I think of Hobby Lobby but I've had this for literally years so uh, I was trying to mess with it the hot glue was so stringy I was getting everywhere so you'll see that uh, as the video goes on. It was a bit of a mess. Getting on everything, it was sticking to me, it was sticking to the table, oh my gosh. Um, but here we are placing the shrubberies, trying to hide the basically the crack so it didn't look so uh, bland. And I do like how, uh, how this came out and uh, you'll get to see the finished product at the final reveal. But this gives you an idea uh, of what you can do with just a few things literally laying around the house. <laughs> so we're going to uh, move on into uh, the next part of the project. This is uh, crafted by Corey's Mini Challenges. Please visit her site. She has a lot to offer and many videos coming up. Here I am looking at making three crosses. Uh, I am making the cross for the center, uh, which was the cross Jesus laid on as a representation here. And it is different, so I carved it out with a uh, X-Acto knife um, because it is driftwood. It's very soft and I tied it together with copper wire. Uh, I didn't want glue showing. I didn't want, uh, you know, anything like that. Um, and rope disintegrates over time. Packing, it doesn't work well for me. My cats like it too much. Uh, so 
The copper wire was a great fit and I did crisscross this wire um, more for symbology in my creation, but um, it was the very essence of making what the cross represented for me. And so I love the fact that um, it sticks out a bit um, with the copper color and uh, using wire cutters, all I had to do was then twist it as tight as I wanted it to get it to stay in place. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do now and, and making sure that the top crossbar is not loose. And I had issues holding on to the wire. Uh, so the tweezers are helpful. Uh, and then you twist it uh, just for tightening it and cut it to size. And I did the same thing instead of the crossover method. Um, uh, I, I, I chose to do right and left, but here is the first cross uh, balancing out the bottom because it was uh, not straight. Now once I had it straight, I was able to then uh, balance it on the rock pretty well. And, uh, and then I continue to make cross number two. Um, again, that driftwood is very soft and I was able to make it pretty easily. Um, so that it would stay connected to the base uh, of the cross. And then uh, I'm looking for just some even pieces without too many stems sticking out, so I didn't have to cut anything. And uh, the wire, I kept three loops on the right and three loops on the left, um, just to make them different, and cut it with wire cutters and twisted it closed uh, as tight as I needed to. And again, for the third one, uh, again, cutting that notch so that the stick would sit, would basically nestle inside of it. Um, it would be easier to um, hold in place with the, the copper wire. And then uh, once we got that done, um, I was able to secure the end um, of that by twisting it together to make sure that cross beam didn't come loose. And cutting the wire so nobody cuts themselves or gets caught on it. And then it's time for um, this next part. I'm going to uh, place the cross uh, on top of these um, basically river rocks that I had in my backyard. And uh, once they were washed and scrubbed and dried, uh, I was able to then place the cross there. And it, it worked out real, pretty well. Uh, and then I decorated it with some greenery, um, small shrubs that you might find um, in the Middle East and uh, in Jerusalem at the period time. And so it is uh, dyed green, uh, dyed mo uh, dried moss. Um, or peat and uh, it makes great shrubbery so that was uh, that was one of the projects and I'm just decorating it here trying to fill in any of those blank spaces to hide the glue and then we'll go on to cross number two and it, I did use E6000 uh, glue on this and it does dry pretty quickly but you may have to um, you know, balance it so that it dries in place until it, and, and again, until it is dry. Um, so that was one of my little challenges here. Uh, just because, you know, it's rock, you know, and they're not level. So I'm going to let that go for just a minute and you can see the process. I did lean this against my uh, my uh, camera uh, tripod because I needed ha I, I didn't have enough hands. <laughs> so the the third one I decided to lean against the rock, um, more symbology there, uh, and then I'll decorate that around the edges um, on the base with the the shrubbery, and then we'll move into. Uh, the next part of our video here. 
So this is the uh, fourth element in the mini challenge for today. And now I'm making the uh, crown of thorns. I decided to use half inch needles with black wire. And each of these needles I am uh, bending up to close on itself to leave the pointed end out and the stub end in the center to form the circle. So that when I do twist these together with the wire, it'll be individual. Um, so I did, I did this and you're going to see the process in just a minute here. And I did lose one. Welcome to my club. And uh, I still haven't found it. <laughs> so we're going to turn this over onto the jewelry pliers and um, close that gap. And you want to make sure that you do that as, as well as you can because you don't want it to come off once it's twisted together. It'll leave a gap in your, in your uh, crown. Very easy to do. Uh, these needles or pins um, I did find at a thrift store. Um, so I'm not quite sure where you would get these. I happened to, I come across these a couple weeks ago out when I was out and about, you know, shopping. Um, and I haven't really looked for them. So I, I will try to find that for you. So we're finishing the, uh, the crown of thorns and we're going to start with that twisted wire. And... Uh, I did make a loop so I'd have something to, to close it with and then I add on one needle, one pin, twist it three times, add another pin, uh, twist it three times until I got the desired length to form the crown of thorns. And you'll get to see the final uh, product at the reveal. But we're going to continue with that so you can see, it, see how it is put together. And uh, pardon me for being on the edge of the screen. Uh, we'll try to, I, I am trying to get better with that. So put it on the wire, twist it, put it on the wire, twist it. And I'm just flattening it out to make sure that I don't lose the uh, prepared thorn. And here I'm twisting it to make it into the circle that I want. And combining the wires in and through the, the other part of the wire and twisting it around and cutting it. And then you'll see the final result at the reveal. So I think the total measurement on that was one inch thereabouts. And I'm just making sure that the twisted needles don't come off of the, this crown that I made. Cross number one. And then we're going to move on to cross number two. And cross number three. DIY number one, two, three, and four. And DIY number five. Hold on for the final reveal. I hope you like it. Now remember, follow at Crafted by Corey. She's got some amazing videos. We want to encourage each other to uh, follow along and subscribe. Thanks for watching.